The Goat Owls is back, grading every single NFL team based off their performance in Week 10. A lot of close games this week. Not too many flawless performances, but let's break down these grades. Starting with that very entertaining one on Thursday Night Football, the Ravens squeaking by the Bengals, coming back, winning 35-34. to Yeah, it was entertaining. Yeah, there was some good offense, especially down the stretch, but majority of this game, you know, the first half wasn't entertaining, but majority of this game, I'm thinking... I, you know, I didn't really feel like those were two heavyweight teams, and some people have that takeaway. I thought there was some heavyweight players in that game, but man, first half, the Raven, most of the game, the Ravens couldn't get much offense going, and there was kind of a stall of offense, but, but you could tell both these defenses weren't that good. I thought it was just kind of bad offense in this game. The Ravens really couldn't get Derrick Henry going like normal, and they waited until the fourth quarter to really explode on offense, so if you give them an offensive grade in the fourth quarter, it's an A+, plus, but... Still worry about the defense. The offense kind of stalled for a while, so I wasn't overly thrilled. Like I, I wish they could be on the same page at the same time. Wish they could be more consistent with the Bengals. Yeah, it's the same thing. Like the defense finally was stepping up. I thought it was the more of the more of the Ravens making mistakes on offense, but then they the defense let them down. You know, Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow, these guys were awesome. Some of those fourth down attempts, or all of the fourth down attempts, were deep shots to Jermaine Burton. Not really sure what that was. Uh, I gave both teams a B minus. I actually didn't feel like I watched two great teams. I felt like I watched two teams that had a few star players that really kind of decided the game. But in terms of team performances, didn't really see it. B minus for both teams. They were pretty much even. I mean, the Bengals kick an extra point, goes to overtime again. I don't mind them going for two, though. Put it in your hands, not in a coin flip's hands. Uh, you know, And there was some questionable calls throughout this game. I don't think it was one-sided. It looked one-sided at the end, but... Uh, it, it, there was questionable calls on both sides. I mean, right from the start, the Germany game, the Panthers won 20 to 17 over the giants. Yeah. Another, another game where I didn't feel like it was too great. Obvious wasn't two great teams going at each other. The Panthers win. They play better on defense. Chuba Hubbard obviously went off again. No surprise there. They create turnovers on defense. And again, that's kind of my takeaway. The defense played better, but was I overly thrilled about this? I mean, with all the mistakes the Giants had, the mistakes that the Giants had in the red zone after doing the work and getting down there, all the mistakes they had, they still had a shot, went to overtime, and it took one more mistake, a Tyrone Tracy fumble, for the Panthers to pull it off. So, can't be overly thrilled with it, but there were some good things there. I gave him a C plus for that performance. And the Giants, you could you could argue, minus the turnovers, outplayed the Panthers. They could have won even with the turnovers, but they were very sloppy still. Obviously, Daniel Jones was off. Um, you know, Tracy had a good game, but a fumble in overtime. Just super sloppy. Very disappointing from them. They can't stop the run. That's been a common theme over the last several weeks, and we saw it in this game. You know, wasn't a god awful performance. I mean, the turnovers put you in that category, but. Take away the turnovers, everything else was in the run defense as well, but wasn't super terrible, and they could have won this game. But, again, just too sloppy. C-plus for the Panthers, C-minus for the Giants. Patriots beat up the Bears 19-3. to The Bears get an obvious F. They are showing, they are proving right now. At this moment, they have the worst offense in football. So that, in a game like that against the Patriots, that'll certainly give you an F. The defense... You know, it doesn't look as stellar as it did earlier in the year for most of the year, which I thought it was the best defense football for, for a good portion. It still could be. They're not getting any help from the offense, but it looks a little more vulnerable, but it's probably the offense's fault. But, you know, play calling's bad. The quarterback plays bad. The offensive line plays bad. Uh, they don't even try to make big plays right now. The receivers are losing interest, and now the defense is going to start losing interest. So it's an F performance. Playing the Patriots in Chicago, the Patriots fresh off a loss to the Tennessee Titans. Come on. And the Patriots had a pretty good the defensive performance to be an A, A+, plus, A+, plus for sure, holding the Bears to three points. Offensively, they kind of did what they needed to do. Drake may had some flash throws for sure, and it still has those those random bad throws. But, you know, it wasn't um, an, an incredible offensive performance. They did, they did what they needed to do uh, to kind of just get by the Bears. Put them in a B plus, A- minus range. Wasn't overly wild. You know, the defense, yeah, the Bears' offense is really bad, but B+, plus is where I felt comfortable with the Patriots for this week. Bills beat the Colts 30-20. to I gave the Bills a B. I gave the Colts a D+. Plus. It's an interesting game here because the Bills got off to a great start, getting a pick six. The defense was awesome in this game. They got after Joe Flacco, and they created turnovers. Jonathan Taylor still ran on them, and they still let Alec, Alec Pierce kind of get wild on them. Even with all those turnovers, the Colts still gained a bit of yards and actually had a chance in this game. So that's why it's a little iffy for the Bills. The offense didn't do a whole lot. I guess they got a, they got a lot of people involved. Different people involved, obviously. Wasn't one of Josh Allen's best games. Not that he was awful. 
Um, you know, uh, the way this game went, they should have won like 42 to 7, 10. I don't know, somewhere around there. So the fact that the Colts at one point were like, could they be in this game? Could they win this game? Doesn't sit super well with me, but they got people involved. The defense played an incredible game. I give them a B for that. And the Colts, I mean, yeah, given all the turnovers, they were still kind of in the game and they and they still made some plays. But, I mean, just so sloppy. Turnovers from start to finish, uh, you know, just, just nothing great about, I mean, Jonathan Taylor ran well, but nothing great about this team. And it kind of goes back to the decision of putting Joe Flacco in there. Nothing looks great right now for the Colts. So just, just so sloppy in this game where you feel like you got to put him in that D range, give him a D plus. Cause again, they were trying to fight back. They had some yardage at least Broncos and chiefs. The chiefs stay undefeated by a blocked somewhat of a chip shot field goal. And they win 16 to 14. I gave both teams a B minus. You could argue the Broncos outplayed the chiefs. They had it, you know, it was coming down in the last seconds at field goal, but they had the lead for a majority of it. And if it wasn't for a blocked field goal, they probably win that game, but it did happen. First half, Broncos looked much better in a B minus. Like if they played the entire game, like they did the first half, uh, offensively at least, or just in general, and they and they lost, we'll say still, they probably would have been better. They definitely would have been better in a B minus. They kind of shut down the second half. Just not much going in the passing game. Were they getting a little conservative? Yeah, perhaps the defense played very well in this game. You know, kind of. I know the Chiefs kind of marched back, but. Um, is a tough one because you, it, the positive for the Broncos is they did put up a fight with the current best team in football, undefeated, only undefeated team in football. But yeah, second half, they could have just done a little bit. They could have just done a little bit of what they did in the first half. They would have won this game. So I actually put blame there rather than look at the block field goal. And the Chiefs, you know, the Broncos moved the ball on them in the first half. So I, I don't want to say full great defensive performance, but in the second half, they were looked like the Chiefs defense, the recent Chiefs defense that we know. And they did clutch up. They found ways to get a little more points on the board and kind of come back and then make a big play and block the field goal. So wasn't overly thrilled with either team. There was there was parts of this game where I was pretty damn impressed with the Broncos. They just couldn't finish it off. Just both feel like a B- minus after after that game. Saints win their first game without Dennis Allen with Darren Rizzi as the interim coach. And there was a lot more fire to this team and there was some bright spots. Uh, but another one I wasn't really overly thrilled with either team. The Saints do pull off a victory and it felt like they should have had it a little easier. But then if you look back at the game, the Falcons moved the ball. Bijan moved the ball all over them. The Falcons even threw the ball on them until they got to the red zone. You give the Saints credit for the red zone defense. Uh, you know, but if the Falcons just hit field goals, they win this game. And, and, a, and a, who was a good kicker, Young Way Koo, couldn't hit field goals. So um, early off, early in this game, you know, MVS, they were kind of going off a little bit, the Saints, but kind of shut down, like nothing going for them in the second half. They A little more fire, but they were a little fortunate to win this game. They get a C plus. The Falcons, yeah, kind of sloppy, missed field goals. The red zone offense definitely could have been better, but... They moved the ball. Bijan had a good game. If they just make some field goals they expect to make, maybe one less Kirk Cousins turnover, then they win the game. So there are parts about this. It's a very disappointing loss against a struggling Saints team. You know, division game, it's very disappointing. But for the most part, they did enough. They just couldn't fully execute. So I give them a C. It, wasn't over, it was a close game. I guess somewhat entertaining here and there. It wasn't really the best game if you look at the, the how these two teams executed in this game. 49ers beat the Bucks in a, I guess a thriller there, 23 to 20. The Bucks didn't play as well as the score might show. Like they had it, they were close. It was a good, you know, they felt like they were going to send it to overtime, but they didn't have a whole lot going on offense. They were a little clutch at the end to get that field goal. Irving had a couple good plays for them. Other than that, the Niners defense who haven't been like the healthiest defense. You know, they kind of, sh- I don't want to say shut them down, but they really slowed them down. Not much going for that Bucks offense. And defensively, they were pretty good in the red zone, but they couldn't stop the pass. Once again, Brock Purdy threw all over them. Um, you, you know, it just it really wasn't, even though they were close to going to overtime, maybe close to winning the game, it wasn't really the best outing for the Buccaneers. So I give them a C. In the 49ers, it could have been a lot better for them. I mean, they did throw well in the Buccaneers. They didn't execute in the red zone. Um, you know, defensively, they play well. Special teams, just awful. You know, three missed field goals. I know Moody gets a clutch one at the end, but they could have won this game very, very easily. Missed field goals, muff punt, special teams, part of football. It's still very, very sloppy. The way this game went, the way the Bucks couldn't stop the pass, the way that, that the defense of the 49ers was playing, they probably should have won this game by a lot. Even if you add those some of those field goals on, they probably should have won by more. So I give them a B-minus, still very sloppy, mainly when it comes to the special teams. 
B minus for the Niners, C for the Buccaneers there. Steelers and Commanders. I mean, we had a lot of close games this week where I'm going, where those teams, did they actually look good in that game? It was a lot of sloppiness. This game, there was some sloppiness. wasn't perfect, but it felt like two good teams playing each other in this game. So I love that. The Steelers squeak by, win by a point. This one... Kind of, yeah, I've kind of felt like it came down to the end there. The commanders had a shot. There was a controversial call with Ertz being right at the line. I, I think that ball was right on the line. I, I personally would have called the first. I understand it's hard to kind of reverse that, but I don't think we could put it all on that very, very close call that in no way, no matter where, which way they call it, we can't really say it's phantom. Um, you know, so it wasn't any, anything along those lines. The spot was way off, but uh, it was just a really good game here. And the Commanders had it. They had control, but the Steelers' defense stepped up and were, they were really figured out how to adjust and slow down Jaden, this Jaden Daniels offense, especially in the second half. So if the Commanders could have just put one more drive together, which they could not do, they probably would have won this game. But then the Steelers kind of came back and it felt like, all right, they have control once they just punch this in the end zone. Warren fumbles. So there was some sloppiness here and there, but... There were, there, you saw them both teams play very well on both sides of the ball at, you know, during portions of this game. Uh, the Steelers find a way to win this game. Um, very, very impressive. The Commanders were missing some guys, though, so I would like to see them fully healthy, and it just shows that they could be a, a very solid team. But very impressed with the Steelers recently. They get a B-plus, Commanders get a B. That felt like two good teams going at it, so that's what you like to see. Vikings and Jags, a real barn burner here. 12-7 to Minnesota wins, and... I guess a tricky one to grade because you look at the Vikings, they had dominant time of possession. They moved the ball every time they had the ball except for once on the Jags. Got in the red zone, obviously couldn't execute in the red zone, and the defense completely shut down the Jags every single possession except for one. So you'd think, thinking about it that way, the Vikings probably get a good grade. But given this, I mean, just, just look at this game. Who you're playing, you're playing the struggling Jags. They have Mac Jones in there. I know the defense played well, but it's just extremely disappointing. You expect them to move the ball down the field. You don't expect them not to get touchdowns. So uh, it, it's just that lately they don't feel like they're as good as their record in this game. So I gave them a C plus, even though there are signs of them being dominant in this game. You know, not overly thrilled. And the Jags, I, I mean, the only reason they're not in a D range or even worse is because they were winning most of this game and they held the Vikings to 12 points, zero touchdowns. They got turnovers, especially in the red, you know, mainly in the red zone, in the end zone, even a couple times. Uh, you know, so that, those are good things. You would think the grade would be high, but. I mean, given they got those turnovers, you got to find a way to do something. The offense couldn't do anything. They turned the ball over in clutch moments and crucial moments at the end. And uh, the, even though the defense got turnovers, the Vikings moved all over them it, with ease. For some reason, it wasn't easy in the red zone. So give credit to the Jags clutch red zone defense. But yeah, I thought they should have ran the ball a lot more. I know the Vikings are usually good stopping run, but they couldn't stop ETN in this game early. So yeah. Um, yeah, it was a weird game. Very strange game. Just not thrilled with either team. But you don't expect to be thrilled with the Jags. You expect to be thrilled with the Vikings. And I was not, even though the defense did their job in this game. Chargers 27, Titans 17. Again, the Chargers a B. They're in a B, B plus range. You know, they, got a, they took a little bit to kind of get going in this game. There was a controversial fumble that got changed to a to a incomplete. I thought it was a fumble. I couldn't believe they switched that. But it does seem like ever since last year, maybe the year before, Anytime the quarterback is trying to throw the ball, and even the ball gets knocked out, they 99% of the time these days they're calling it incomplete. I, I don't really, you know, usually it's when the hands up, upward motion and in a throwing motion, I should say as well, wasn't really there and that one. So that could have changed the game. I still like the Chargers' chances, but it took them a little bit to get going. The Titans actually had some explosive plays on offense. They just didn't have enough in this game. Chargers' defense, obviously, the highlight was them getting after Will Levis and, and getting sacks and just pressuring him all game. Um, I gave him a B on that one. Wasn't overly thrilled, but they did enough. You know, again, Herbert pretty efficient in the second half. Titans, I mean, they had some explosive plays. Uh, couldn't protect Levis. You know, Levis probably not good enough on top of it, but they it felt like they were in this game for a little bit. You know, they had that call where we like we talked about kind of go against them, but uh, they're struggling right now. I thought they played this game a little better than I thought they would, even though they lost by 10 points here. So B for the Chargers, C- minus for the Titans. Eagles romp the Cowboys 34 to 6. I'm going to give the Eagles an A, the Cowboys an F. What's keeping the Eagles from being an A plus is yeah, they weren't even considered an A plus from even though they you know looking at the score 34 to 6, it looks like an A plus, but they started this game really slow. Really slow. Hurts 
it felt like was even struggling, even though he was accurate. I think he only had like one incomplete pass when he had that interception. It was a really good throw by, or a inter, uh, really good interception by Diggs. Uh, and he did have a fumble at that point. And at that point, it's like I was going, man, if the Cowboys were even semi-healthy, if they just had Dak in this game, they'd probably be winning right now. And, and this would be a ball game, and the Cowboys actually would have the advantage. But then the Eagles kind of took control, and then they took off after that. So score says A+, plus, but the slow start and just kind of taking advantage of the other team, not having their quarterback and being really beat up, um, you know, just resulted in that big victory, I thought. So they were more in the A, A- range, even though they did dominate the Cowboys. I know they're missing Dak, they're missing guys, but nothing going. And then back to the Eagles, the defense has been incredible, so they're definitely in the A range. For the defense, I give them an A+. Plus. Um, you know, but they're, they're pretty close to flawless. Uh, Cowboys, yeah, just nothing going for them. Defense got after Hurts. They got after Hurts. So, you know what, Micah Parsons back, you know, right off the bat in this game. They're just constantly on the field. I mean, the Eagles defense absolutely shut down Cooper Rush and this Cowboys offense. And we've seen Cooper Rush in the past come in, and I know it's a different year, and do a little bit of damage at least. Just no chance in this game. Absolutely no chance. So they get an F for obvious reasons, the reasons I just explained. And the only A-plus so far, the Monday Night Football game still has to happen. Once that's over, I put that in this video, so we'll see if anyone gets an A-plus. But the only A-plus so far, the Arizona Cardinals, everything kind of going their way because their play in this game against the Jets felt like they could do anything they wanted. If they wanted to throw more, they could have done it. If they wanted to run more and be effective there, they could have done it. The defense was outstanding. Defense continues to get better and better. It was a doubted defense. You know, it's still, I still don't think it's the best defense in the world, but it's playing great right lately. They played very well. I mean, the Jets' offense started to click in that second half of that last game. People were thinking, oh, maybe they're going to get going. The defensive line was getting going too, but the Cardinals said no to that. Uh, the coaching was great. The game plan was great. You know, making having Kyler Murray's legs as a big part of the game plan was so smart against a good Jets defense who actually is sneaky has a weakness of stopping scrambling quarterbacks. So I thought they did a phenomenal job. The Card Cardinals are continue to roll. They continue to get better. And the Jets, it's extremely disappointing. Thought there was some hope after uh, the end of last the, the last game against the Texans, but no, I had nothing going for them. The defense even doesn't look good right now. It's just it's the coaching's brutal. I think Rodgers. I keep saying I think he changes a lot, you know, at the line, and it's it's not going great. Even Adams. I mean, just just. Rodgers is forcing it to Adams, and, you know, he wasn't awful, but still, I didn't think he was great. Uh, there was a drop in there as well, but it's been extremely uh, disappointing for the Jets. I mean, the Cardinals started off favored in this game, and then it flipped, and all of a sudden the Jets were favored, and, and this is what they got, 6-31, to so they get an obvious F for this game. The Sunday night football game was a wild one. It really wasn't the best play, but the Texans in the first half was great. For the most part, they couldn't really run the ball, but it was great. They were on their way of getting an A, and the Lions in the second half, the fourth quarter, turned it up a little bit. But oh, weird game. I mean, we do know these are two good teams, but the Lions, I mean, Goff was off. The offensive line was allowing pressure, so that's new. Goff was up five interceptions, just, you know, panicking under pressure. They couldn't really run the ball. They got going a little bit at the end, obviously. Gibbs, for the most part, Montgomery near the goal line, but... They were off their game. You know, I guess we hold the Lions to high standards, but they were definitely off their game. And the defense stepped it up more in the second half. The first half was awful. They kind of showed that the, the Texans showed that you could, you could throw the ball on the Lions. But the Lions did pick it up in the second half, but I, Stroud had a wide-open touchdown and just underthrew it. The defense really didn't do anything on that play. I think if he hits that play, they win the game. There's a very controversial missed call towards the end. That you know, and the Lions squeak by two field goals, so it wasn't their best performance. They do find a way to win. I give them a C plus on that one. There was a lot of things that were off about them, but maybe that's because we do hold the Lions to high standard because they're playing very well. Texans look great in the first half, but overall, you look at this game at a whole, as a whole. They did get the passing game going a little bit. They were getting pressure on Jared Goff, which some team and turning him over, which teams just cannot do. But Stroud missing that one touchdown. He's a little off as that game game went on. The offensive line's a problem. Even the tackles. People blame the guards. Interior, it's a problem. It's more of the problem. But even the tackles aren't doing so so well. Uh, Tunsil even getting beat. But Titus Howard stripping the ball from C.J. Stroud. I don't know what that is. Mixon couldn't get anything going. Really wasn't his fault. There was nowhere to go because he's been phenomenal up in this point. He had some explosive plays early in this game. but And then defensively, uh, they had him. They were playing great. And they kind of just shut. They kind of folded there at, at the end. So, uh, wasn't overly thrilled with the full performances of either team, but we do know they are two pretty solid teams. So C plus for the Lions, C for the Texans.
Monday Night Football, the Dolphins pull it off over the Rams, 23-15. to An interesting, an odd game, an odd game. I, thought, I expected a lot more offense. I think everyone did. Uh, more defense than expected in this one. I thought Anthony Weaver coached a pretty good game for Miami's defense there. Um, the Dolphins started off well on offense, then it was kind of hot and cold with Tua, took some bad sacks, had some turnovers, but made some clutch plays under pressure, you know, third down, crucial ones there. So, uh, yeah, they couldn't really run the ball that effectively, though, and Waddle's been very disappointing. Drops and even watching him run routes is something doesn't seem right, and we already know Tyree Kill isn't fully there. Uh, but they found a way to win. They extended drives and needed to. The defense really stepped up. They got some guys back healthy. Uh, obviously, that helped their defense. So um, overall, was impressed. There was still some some sloppiness and things kind of didn't go how they expected, especially with the run game in this one. Uh, they were allowing a lot of pressure again, but felt like it, you know obviously a solid win. Maybe they deserved or could have won a couple of the last two. So this one definitely earned here. They get a B in the Rams. Although they were able to move the ball a little bit, there was still some sloppiness kind of shutting them down. The offensive line got healthier, but they didn't play all that great against a Dolphins pass rush that hasn't been overly, you know, super threatening. So we've seen a bad snap. That was costly too. So whenever they had a good drive, something kind of happened to the Rams. And the defense did create some turnovers and did get some pressure on, on Tua. A lot of times I thought it was just kind of him holding the ball a bit. So I thought it was more just Miami yeah, holding the ball, making mistakes, rather than the Rams defense. But the Rams defense was playing pretty solid, They especially stopping the run. But overall, very sloppy. It felt like when the Dolphins absolutely needed to convert, they converted. So I wasn't you know, that and all with the defense there. It just felt like the Rams went backwards. They were starting to heat up a little bit. And again, now it kind of felt like some sloppiness there. So they're in that C, C plus range. That would have been a little generous though. Just couldn't execute. They got outplayed most of the game. Parts of this game, I thought they were going to come back and win just because of what's been happening in the past Dolphins games and the Rams been clutching up, but they never really got there, right? It, the Dolphins had control of this game, even though the Rams were still fighting, uh, you know, in this one. But uh, that's... That'll do it for the grades for all of the Week 10 games. We're back every Monday night with this video. Let me know your guys' thoughts. We got weekly coverage ahead of us here with power rankings and weekly picks for Week 11. So join us for that. Like, subscribe to Norfolk. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.